Crim 2 News 10 at 10 begins now with Mark Hammerhand That's me. and Jeremy Legou. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crem2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started tonight. Taking a look at our top stories caught on camera, a Spokane business owner says he came close to serious injury when a neighbor and a longtime customer was seen chopping down a tree with two samurai swords. That shop's owner, Robert Salib, says the man who he believes was suffering from a mental health crisis then swung the swords at him. That's when Salib turned and ran inside. He says this highlights Spokane's need for some sort of behavioral health intervention. There's a lot of low income people out there that need mental help, but they can't go to a professional, a professional down, down the street or, you know, we can't help but feel sorry for him. Everybody here knows who he is, but he needs help. Krem 2 is not identifying the suspect as he's being held until he can have a mental health evaluation. A suspect did appear before a judge today and is now facing second degree assault and resisting arrest charges. New tonight, we are learning more about the victims in last week's deadly gas station explosion in Cardiff, Idaho. The incident killed two people and sent two others to the hospital with serious burns. 53-year-old Brandon Cook and 62-year-old Wesley Lineberry died last Wednesday. The Clearwater County coroner says both men died from blunt force trauma from the explosion. Cook was from Orofino. Lineberry was from Pierce, Idaho. Two Atkinson distributing employees, Donnie Billiter and Roxanne Hubs, were life flighted to Seattle after the explosion. That explosion remains under investigation. Tonight, Hubs remains in critical condition. GoFundMes have been set up for both surviving victims. At this time, you can find those on our website. Just head to creme.com. New tonight, federal mediators are now working to bring Boeing and the union representing 33,000 of its workers closer together. That strike is now in its fifth day. Meantime, workers remain on the picket lines. The union's international president traveled to Everett today to show support for workers who are picketing there. They've sacrificed their wages. They've sacrificed their pension. They've sacrificed on their health insurance. Enough is enough. They need to be respected for the work that they do for the Boeing company. Workers rejected a tentative contract with a 25% increase over four years. They are now asking for a 40% pay increase. Boeing's chief financial officer is calling for a hiring freeze across Boeing, a pause to pay increases for promotions, and plans to reduce supplier purchase orders as this strike continues. All right, let's switch gears and take a look at the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Jeremy the Good. Jeremy, That's a bit me. cooler today compared to yesterday. So what's in store for the hours and days to come? <laughs> More sunshine as we head into the next couple of days. Let's go ahead and do that forecast before I completely fall apart. We'll stop laughing in my ear. We have a storm moving its way out of the region. What it's doing is still throwing a little bit of moisture back at us. We knew we'd get a couple more of these stray showers to squeeze out, and that is exactly what is happening across the region. Those are going to eventually just move their way to the south and out. By tomorrow morning, it's back to clear skies across much of the inland northwest, and we're hanging on to that sunshine as we head through the next couple of days. In fact, it's starting to look more like we get sunshine heading into the weekend than it is rain. 76 tomorrow under partly cloudy skies or increasing sunshine. 77 Thursday, 74 and sunny on Friday. All right, thank you very much, Jeremy. We'll check back in with you later in the show. New tonight, the Washington Department of Corrections is planning to take its last execution chamber offline tomorrow morning. According to the DOC, the so-called death chamber is being shut down in the Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla tomorrow morning. 78 inmates have been executed there since 1904, the last one taking place at that location in 2010. And in an effort to bring more to every story, that move from the DOC comes after Governor Jay Inslee announced a moratorium on the death penalty in 2014, vowing to never sign a death warrant while in office. Later on, the state Supreme Court invalidated the death penalty in 2018 after ruling it was racially biased. A statistical analysis from the University of Washington found juries were about four times more likely to sentence black defendants to death. And here is a quick look at Idaho's death penalty history. Right now, there are nine people on Idaho's death row, including Chad Daybell, and many of them have been there for decades. The last time the state successfully executed someone was back in 2012. Earlier this year, the state tried to execute Thomas Creech, but that attempt failed. 
In 2023, the Idaho legislature passed a law allowing prisons to use a firing squad as a method of execution. Under that law, the firing squad can only be used if the state cannot get lethal injection drugs or if lethal injection executions are ever ruled unconstitutional. Brian Koberger and Skyler Mead are both facing the death penalty after allegedly committing crimes in North Idaho. Koberger is accused of murdering four University of Idaho students nearly two years ago. His trial is set to begin in Ada County next summer. Meantime, Mead is accused of murdering an elderly Julietta man while on the run after escaping custody. His trial is set to begin February 3rd in Nez Perce County. Well, the search is on in Coeur d'Alene to find a new city council member. And yes, you can apply. Graham 2's Cody Proctor brings us more on tonight's council meeting and the search for a new member. Coeur d'Alene Mayor Woody McEvers was not at Tuesday night's meeting, mirroring his old seat on the council, which still remains empty. The night began with a commendation. The Coeur d'Alene Fire Department handed out a life-saving award to Dave Powell for helping to save the life of a young man in the water of Lake Coeur d'Alene. And the council got to business. On the agenda included public hearings for a zone change for the River's Edge apartments and the annexation to help expand the Coeur d'Alene Hockey Academy. The council passed both, scoring a goal for the sports growth in North Idaho. Not at the meeting, Mayor Woody McEvers, whose old seat remains empty on the council. The city recently asked the public to apply for the position, a change from a month ago when former Mayor Jim Hammond initially put forth the nominee to take over the seat. That nomination failed. Council member Christy Wood voted against last month's nomination, not because of the nominee, but for the process. It was really about including the public and giving the public an opportunity to, if they want to apply, they can be interviewed. Um, just really about being transparent and inclusive, and that was our goal. Applicants need to have these qualifications, including having their primary residence within the city of Coeur d'Alene and being a Coeur d'Alene resident for at least 30 days before applying. Now, if you are interested in the position, you have to get that application in by September 27th. After that, the city council will then interview the candidates picked to move on at a city council meeting in early October. For more details on that application, go to our website, crem.com. In Coeur d'Alene, Cody Proctor, Crem 2 News. Now to our night beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. There are new details tonight out of Moses Lake. A suspect wanted for shooting his mother and stepfather in Franklin County has been arrested. Police say 28 year old Daniel Martinez was found in Moses Lake. Authorities say he was booked on first degree assault charges. His bail is set at $1 million. Closing arguments in the Kroger Albertsons merger case got underway in Oregon today. We are waiting for a judge to rule on whether to temporarily block it. Meantime, a trial is underway in Washington after Attorney General Bob Ferguson filed an antitrust lawsuit to try to stop the deal. Yesterday, dozens of workers rallied against the merger in Seattle as the trial began. If the merger goes through, <laughs> they give a lot of reassurances, but it gives me a little comfort. They even testified last week in the federal trial that there are and actually nothing legally binding them in these promises. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson says the merger would violate Washington's antitrust laws, eliminate Kroger's closest competitor and cause prices to go up. Kroger executives argue the opposite, saying the merger will allow them to better compete with the likes of Walmart and Amazon and will lower prices, they say, for consumers. A teenager riding his bike to school was hit by a car in Post Falls today. According to police, the 15-year-old boy was using a crosswalk at Seasal and Pole Line when he was hit by an SUV exiting a roundabout. The boy was then taken to the hospital. He was treated for minor injuries and released. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's Krem.com. Well, some good news for crocheters out there. Paradise Fibers in North Spokane back open after a fire damaged their building six months ago. The business reopened this morning. The local craft store said in a post online, quote, a huge thank you to everyone for your patience and support during our downtime. We have missed you and can't wait to see what you'll create next, unquote. The hours for the hours rather and more information, just head to the store's Facebook page. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.